guys, welcome back to the channel and today we're going to be reacting to Top 25 places to visit in Norway So in the top 10, let's Ooh. dive a little deeper, let's do top 25, let's see Some places probably going to look familiar, we'll see Off at Geringerfjord, now located about a 6 hour drive from Oslo Geringerfjord is one of Norway's most popular destinations The fjord is over 260 meters deep A lot of fjords in Norway, that's what I remember from last reaction and surrounded by massive mountains. Now one of the most spectacular features of the fjord is the Seven Sisters Waterfall. It consists of seven that descend 410 meters to the water below. The best way to see the fjord is by boat. Some people arrive by cruise ship, but you can also- I was about to say, this looks like a cruise ship, not, not a boat, but okay. Oh. To take a ferry or tour boat to show you around. This is by far the best way to witness the waterfalls and majesty of That's the fjord. Really cool. Now, the main reason I wanted to go to Geringa Fjord was to visit Skagafla. It's this historic farm built on a cliff 270 meters above the fjord. Now, you can only access the hike by taking a ferry over. It costs about $50 per person, and the ride had some amazing... Expensive, but that's Norway, so... Mm. ...views. Now, when we got off the boat, the hike was no joke. It just goes straight up the mountain where you get some amazing views on your way up. When you reach the farm, you'll feel like you're in a fairy tale. The cabins are covered in moss-covered roofs, and the views you get up there are just astounding. I'm just jealous of who ever owns those cabins. Farmers used to live here. Oh, I wonder if there's anyone there. I mean, it's nice, but imagine you drop something and it just rolls down. <laughs> <laughs> and you're chasing after it. <laughs> it just fucking rolls down. <sighs> all the way back in the Middle Ages, and it was inhabited until the early 1900s, back when it was a farm. Like, was a you would have to put up a fence. Like, yeah. I guess I'm assuming they're not living now, it's kind of like a museum of yeah. sorts, so like it's cool, but if you were like... Because he's there, like... Yeah, yeah, yeah right, right, buddies. yeah, so I, I'm assuming it's just, you know, like a nice place to, mm -hmm. to visit as a tourist, but yeah. If, <laughs> if someone lived there, you gotta put up a fence. Yeah. Or over a hundred animals. Now due to its location, it was a somewhat dangerous spot due to avalanches and rock slides and also the remoteness of it made it a tricky place for agriculture. Oh, I guess it's not slanted. It, uh, from the picture it looks slanted. Yeah. So I, yeah, here it's not slanted, so it's okay, okay. Because that one picture he had was, was like slanted, I don't the know. The farmers made it work. Today it's easily one of Norway's most beautiful hikes and one of my favorite places I've visited during my time in Norway. Now afterwards we're going to take a drive on the Geiringer Vegan. If you're driving south out of Geiringer Fjord, you have to take this road. It's this mountain pass with so many amazing spots. Now one of the first places I came across was a set of mountain cabins right next to some waterfall. It looked like it could be a movie set for a fantasy. Yeah, the, the nature right there. Mm. The little, I don't know what you call it there. Looks like water. Yes, there's water. I just don't know what you would call it. Like yeah. it's not a river. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know, the channel, yeah, I don't know the word for it, but yeah, it looks beautiful. A stream. You keep driving up the road. There you go, a stream, yes, that's the word. You'll come across this unique landscape with exposed rock and hardly any vegetation. The road just winds through the scenery, and it's such a beautiful drive. I love the lakes that are up there. One was called Juvatnet, and it had this dark blue color with an impressive mountain backdrop. And then down the road was Lingvatnet which had some towering mountain walls. I mean, on the drive, there's just so many cool lookout spots. One of the most impressive is the Geiringer Skywalk. It's the highest fort view in Norway and costs about $25 to access. Wow. Now, after it, we're gonna head this stream. Now, it's about an hour and a half drive from Geiringer. We stayed here several days and it's this wow. beautiful village. You know with what's this... so cool when the water reflects the clouds? Oh, yeah. That's really beautiful. Serpentine River that winds through the valley. What's great about Stream is that it's close to so many places. Ooh. One of my favorites is Luvatne. It's located just 20 minutes from Stream and it's this glacier lake with a distinct turquoise water and has an incredible backdrop of the mountains. Now when we were there, we drove to the other side of the lake to this place called Ludalen. Now there is this insane waterfall called Rumnefell Fossen. That was easily one of my favorites that I saw in my time in Norway. Yeah, the waterfall that interesting they're very like uh, the stream of water is very narrow like because yeah. when we see other like waterfalls like, like in, in brazil in brazil and south uh, south america it's like you know the whole fucking thing is a waterfall here it's like a very small stream so mm -hmm. very unique 
Now, while Luvaki is stunning the beautiful, this has had its fair share of tragedies over the last few centuries from landslides. And right next to that waterfall I was talking about, in 1905, a massive rock from the Remnant Field Mountain came loose and oh. fell 500 meters where it hit the water. And it caused a tidal wave that wiped out some villages completely Whoa. off the map. Despite this history, Luvaki is a place you gotta visit. It's hard to match the beauty of this Norwegian lake. Now right next to Luvatne is another glacier lake called Olivatne. Now I thought this area was incredibly oh, beautiful. Luvatne, does that like mean the lake in Norwegian? Because mm. Luvatne, Olivatne. Mm -hmm. I love driving around the lake's edge. Now if you go to the very end, there's some impressive glaciers and waterfalls. There was this waterfall called Volefossen. Yeah, you see the waterfalls? They're so oh. narrow. So impressive. And you can also hike to this glacier called Brikstavrin. It's about a five kilometer round trip hike and on the way you'll experience waterfalls wow. and incredible views of the Brickstiles Glacier. Now afterwards we're going to visit this mountain called Ekenibba. Now it's located about an hour's drive from stream and it's this perfectly shaped mountain peak. It kind of reminded me of the Matterhorn. We went to this lake oh, at the big... What is that? Mm -hmm. In the mountain called Bergheim's Botnet. I just had a great time chilling Botnet on the shore again. and marveling at the mountain. If it's not too windy, the lake gives off a perfect reflection of the peak. I mean, just yeah, such a lovely crazy. spot. Now, afterwards, we're going to visit Rome's Dalin. Now, when I got to Norway this summer, this was the first place I went. It's about a five hour drive to get there from Oslo. And it's this oh. phenomenal valley surrounded by some of Europe's highest cliffs. I mean, it's just like unbelievable how massive and sheer the is mountain that, walls are. Like, snow? I'm not sure. Uh, it could be snow. I don't know. I don't know what it is. The thing about Rome's Dalin was the mountain waterfalls. It's home to some of the tallest waterfalls, not just in Norway, but in the world. The waterfall called Monge Fossen is the fourth highest single drop waterfall in the world with a height of 773 meters. There's wow. just waterfalls everywhere you look and a pristine river that runs through the whole valley. Now one reason I wanted to come here was to witness Trollvegen. It is the tallest vertical rock face in all of Europe with a height of 1,700 mm. meters. Now one of the best places to view Trollvegen is from Litlefella or Little Mountain. Now to get there you take a toll road that costs about $10 and it's a fairly the easy hike that takes about 20 minutes. Now when you're up top, you'll be facing the daunting Trollvengen mountain across the valley. When I was there, it was pretty cloudy. Yeah, the, the view is definitely magical with the clouds because you're in the clouds and everything. Mm. I still got a good look at it. Now aside from Trollvengen... Trollvengen? This is a commercial. As I think Hotels.com discovered... It's a commercial about Trollvengen. I remember mm. that name. Mm. There's so many amazing views from the top, such as the Rundstadhorn Peak, which is one of the most uniquely shaped mountains I've ever seen. You also get great views of the Winding River and Valley below. I mean, this place is just freaking amazing. If you come up for sunrise, you'll get a great view of Trollwegen as the sun hits the cliffs. Overall, one of my favorite places I visit in Norway. While we're still on the topic of trolls, we'll go take a drive on the Trolls Path or Troll Stegen. Mm. It was Troll Stegen. Professor Sumter and Troll Stegen. I think that's because there's like a troll, like gnomes of trolls or something like that. Oh. Yeah. Uh. Made for every type and texture. Now, it's located just 20 minutes from Trollvegen. This is possibly the most famous road in all of Norway. It has 11 hairpin turns as it scales up the mountain yeah. with a 10% incline. It was first wow. opened in 1936 after taking eight years to build. I thought driving out would be a little sketchy, but it wasn't too bad except when you're passing that a bus or two. Well, one thing I love about Trollstegen is its waterfalls. There are two of them. My favorites was Stigfossen. It's 320 meters high and it has this arch bridge that passes over it. Now, on top of Trollstegen, there's this really cool visitor center and a lookout point. It's just like a short five minute walk and you'd be able to get panoramic views of the road and all its turns. It was really cloudy when I was there, but that just added to the magic of the location. Norway sure knows how to make good roads. Now, another one of Norway's most mm. famous drives is the Atlantic Ocean Road. Now, the 8.3 kilometer road runs over an archipelago of islands. The Atlantic Ocean Road was Ooh. completed in 1989. It's made up of eight bridges and four resting places and viewpoints. The route is an impressive feat in engineering and it won the Norwegian Construction of the Century Award. So if you decide to do a Norway road trip, you have to take a drive on this scenic road. Wow. Afterwards, we're going to head down to southern Norway to Lisibon, 
to drive down <laughs> another village like road. That. Now, Lisibon is this small village that's about a three hour drive from Stavanger. Now, what I think is so scenic about Lisibon is the road that leads down to it. Now, when I first saw pictures of it, I just couldn't believe it. It consists of 27 hairpin turns that descend down the fjord. Yeah, the roads the are all like long. When you're at wave, the bottom, wave. you'll be amazed by the surrounding walls mm -hmm. of the fjord. Now, after we're gonna head over to the nearby pulpit rock, Located in the same fjord as Lisi Bottom, Pulpit Rock is a famous flat top cliff with a straight drop of over 600 meters. To get there, you can park in the base camp and make a six kilometer hike. The rock can get super packed, wow. so if you want to avoid so the crowds, people. wake up early yeah. and get to the rock to enjoy the sunrise. There's no rain. After, we're going to do another hike to the iconic Trotunga. Now, look at why it's Yeah, there's no rain. Everybody, you know, you can't be stupid. You yeah. Know? Because there's no railing, because nobody owns it, it's free. So like, who's gonna put the railing there? You know, it's. It seems like it's not like a national park or anything like. It's just like you pull up and you look at it. You know. Um. Also, Trotunga is possibly. The this most is the one we saw this. This mm -hmm. rock formation in Norway as it shoots out over 2,000 feet from the lake below. Trotunga is definitely one of the hardest hikes you'll ever do. It's a 28 kilometer round trip oh. trek that takes anywhere from 8 to 12 hours to do. While it is extremely strenuous, it's hard to beat the views of Trotunga. Afterwards, we're going to visit some of Norway's most beautiful cities, starting okay, with Bergen. Located on Norway's southwest coast, surrounded by fjords. The were yeah, because we saw a lot of mountains yeah. here. Bergen is one of Norway's most charming cities. Bergen was founded back in 1070 thanks to its maritime trade domination. Oh, Bergen was the largest city in Norway. I feel like we've seen this too. Yeah. I remember these houses, yeah. Boy, until the 1830s. Today, it's famous for its colorful wooden houses on the old wharf. You can hike the Floyan Mountain to get some amazing panoramic views of the city. After Bergen, we're going to visit Alisun. Now, located about a seven hour drive from Bergen, Alisun is one of Norway's most prominent fishing towns built on a uniquely shaped archipelago. Similar to Bergen, it's home to beautifully wow. colored buildings perched okay, right against the ocean. And to get one of the best views like of the paper, city. like paper, like it's not real. You know that type of art that looks like it's like a cartoon, but it's not? Mm -hmm. You can go up to the Byrampin viewpoint or Mount Asco lookouts. Both will give you incredible panoramic views of the fjord. Yeah, I feel like we see this too. If you go to Alice during the winter months, you might be lucky and witness the stunning Aurora Borealis as it dances oh. across the Norwegian sky. After it, we're going to visit Norway's capital, Oslo. Located on Norway's southern coast, Oslo was founded at the end of the Viking Age during the 11th century. Today, Oslo is one of Europe's fastest growing cities. I love all the modern buildings and museums throughout the city. The Oslo Opera House is an impressive piece of architecture that resembles an iceberg. It was <laughs> Why is always the Opera House? Is the Sydney Opera House, Oslo Opera House? Completed in 2007 and features slanted marble and granite that slide down to the water. After Oslo, we're going to head up to northern Norway to visit Tromsø. Now, when you look at Tromsø on a map, Ooh, it's north to see how big it north. is. It's the northernmost city in the world with a population of over 20,000 people. Tromsø and the area around it is one of the best wow. places in the world wow. to witness the northern That's lights. Cool. Now, from Tromsø, there's a lot of cool places you can visit. You can go to the Lingen Alps, which are about an hour and a half away, and hike to the crystal clear Blavatnet Lake. Now, one interesting place in northern Norway is North Cap or the North Cape. It's the northernmost point in continental Europe and stands upon a 370 meter cliff that dives into the sea. Now to get there, you can make the nine hour drive from Tromsø or you can also fly into Honigsvag or the Alta airports. It's a journey to get there, but it sure is worth it. After, we're gonna cross Ooh. the Barents Sea to visit the world's northernmost inhabited area, huh. Svalbard. Menopause can change your hair. Oh, a lot of northernmost, huh? Yeah. happening here? Makes which sense. I noticed yeah. when I was taking a selfie. Located right between the North Pole oh, and Norway damn. lies this Arctic archipelago. That belongs to Norway? Oh, I don't know that. Okay. The capital of Svalbard is this town called Lundgren, which has a population of 2,000 people. Which and what's cool about point? Svalbard is... Honestly, I don't know. I didn't even know this place existed. Habitable? Yeah. Oh. Well, right, habitable, yeah. That it's a visa-free zone, so basically anyone can move and work there. The biggest danger on Svalbard is the Arctic cold and polar bears. Ooh. In some places, you're required to bring a gun to protect yourself from them, so that's pretty wild. Now, after it, we're going to head back to mainland Norway to visit the iconic Lofoten Islands. Now, Lofoten is located... That place is interesting. I want to do a separate video about that. What is it called? Uh, Svalbard. Okay, I need to write it down. Because that... Uh... 
That definitely looks interesting. Nor Norway, and even though it is in the Arctic Circle, it feels like you're on a tropical island. I was lucky enough to go there a few summers ago and just had an incredible journey road tripping through the islands. Our first pit stop was at this little fishing village called Henny. I think you've seen this because I remember that soccer field in this. Mm -hmm. And like that. Sure. Hennings Bar is home to the world's most scenic soccer field. When we got there, we sadly didn't have a ball, but we had a good time playing on the field wow. and enjoying the incredible. I wonder who films the drone and he just like runs like that because somebody yeah. has to control the drone. Of use of Hennings Bar. We kept driving and made it to the iconic town of Rhine. And when you think of Norway, this is it. It has those red houses surrounded by massive sea mountains. I have to say, this is the most beautiful town in the Fulton. Now, when I was planning my road trip in Norway, uh, I remember just seeing a picture of this place yeah, and I couldn't cool. believe it existed. If you want to do an amazing hike, I recommend hiking to Kvalika Beach. It's about a four kilometer round trip trek and I promise it's worth it. When you get to the beach, you're going to be amazed by the landscape. It has mountains that remind you of Switzerland, an ocean that looks like the Caribbean and it's green as a trout. Looks like the Caribbean, but it's cold as fuck. Uh, I just can't believe really places like this exist, especially in the so Arctic tempting. Circle. Now afterwards, we're going to head to South Strumman to witness one of the world's largest whirlpools. Now located about a three-hour ferry ride from the Fulton Islands, South Strumman is a natural Whoa. wonder with over 110 billion gallons of water wow. passing through the strait every six hours, That's making it one of the strongest currents in the world. One of the coolest features of South Strumman is the whirlpools that the changing tides make. While they aren't whirlpools that you imagine from movies, these whirlpools can get over 33 feet in diameter with a depth of 16 feet when the current is at its strongest. You can take a boat ride through the current or can witness the whirlpools from the ridge above. For our final destination... I wonder if you can swim, like, when you swim through it, what's, what's the feeling like? Oh, no. Where? We're going to visit the no. magical island. Oh, that's interesting. Why not? That's interesting. I wonder if, like, because obviously a boat has a lot, you know, the engine has a lot of power we go through, but I wonder as a... Or not even like a boat, like if swimming in a kayak. Sydney is located in the oh, oh. Arctic Circle and is Norway's second largest island. The reason I wanted to go to Senja was I wanted to hike to this sea mountain called Segla. So I drove to this town called Fjordard and got to the base of the hike, eventually made it to the top and was just baffled by the views. Oh, the rock hiking. formation rose hundreds of meters out oh, of the Oh, he loves hiking, he loves mountains. Yeah. I was just having the time of my life and I decided I wanted to spend the night on top of the mountain so I could see the northern lights. All I had was a blanket and I used my camera bag as a pillow. I set up camp on a mossy cliff ledge and waited for the... Very adventurous. There's no animals. Um, on the cliff edge? Like you just sleep, you roll over? Mm -hmm. Northern lights to show okay. up. Around 11 p.m. I awoke to the aurora borealis above my head. I mean, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. They move surprisingly fast, like snakes in the Arctic wow. sky. Now, seeing the lights made you feel like a kid again, and wolf. Oh, that's interesting, because this footage right here, I always thought it was sped up. I guess that's just how it moves, mm. huh? Mm. Oh, that's so cool. I didn't know that. Every one of the most special nights of my life. Because so, you see how fast it goes. I always, when mm. we see this, I always thought, oh, they just speed it up to kind of create a... A fast oh, effect, but I guess that's how they move uh, in IRL. Oh, wow. Thank you, don't need to fall asleep to start training. Well, that is it for my. Alright, that is mm -hmm. it. Guys, of course, let us know your thoughts. So, please like, comment, and subscribe. Join the Discord. And zoe, zoe, zoe. Share as much kindness as possible.